CBS Sports presents the Sprint Halftime Report. Sprint, yes you can. Halftime in Cleveland, the Bengals leading the Browns 17 to 10. We'll come back with second half action here on CBS. Oh, wow. Catch the season premiere of The King of Queens, CBS Monday, September 19th. Join in on all the games, prizes, and fun for the entire family at the Buckeye Championship Sports Tour. Brought to you by 1460 The Fan, 97.1 and 10 TV. Check out the sports tour at the following locations. And for more information, log on to 10TV.com. You pick your players. They play the games. And you could win up to $25,000. 10TV Fantasy Football. Now play at 10TV.com. Hodge, you like the running game because you ran the rock for Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, baby. I noticed you running around in the pocket scared to death in Philadelphia, though. Yeah, but you know it's the passing game that fills the seats. Now, how about quarterbacks getting knocked on their seats? Oh. Well, you both look great on a flat panel TV. The kid's right, Joss. You to Miss Hodge. Pre-game, big game, post-game. Feel the game on a flat panel TV from H.H. H. Gregg. You know, I would have made a great quarterback except for the throwing part. Jaws would have, too. Okay, smart guy. I found this under your bed. Are the other kids doing this too? What? Do any parents know about this? Is this your first time? Mediocre pizza can tear a family apart. Talk to your kids about better pizza judgment. Order the new chicken bacon ranch pizza from Donato's. Tender roasted chicken and smoked bacon with a ranch dipping sauce. Please, order responsibly. You know this driver's biggest mistake. He never bought car insurance. 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. We keep you legal for less. 10 at 10 on UPN. Join us weeknights. Just about set for second half action here in Cleveland. Bengals lead at 17 to 10. We welcome you back to the booth. Ian Eagle, Solomon Wilcox. Regular season is here. Uh, coming in, your feelings, you thought the Cincinnati offense would be strong. You thought the Cleveland offense would be strong. Anything surprised you first half? Nothing has surprised me. Both offenses have really played very well. Over 200 yards total offense on both sides for Cleveland and Cincinnati. Carson Palmer, I tell you, red hot. He's attempted 17 passes, but yet to be sacked. Trent Dilfer, he's been pretty good himself. Spread the ball to five different receivers. He's yet to go down on the sack. And so both offenses are doing very well. We could have ourselves another shootout here, Ian. And Cleveland kicks it off to start play in this second half. Cincinnati with Tab Terry on the return. Oh! He gets walloped at the 22-yard line. And Terry pops up after the shot from Sean Thompson. Take a listen to this special team's hit. So Thompson laying out the wood to start out this second half. Welcome to the National Football League. Special Taft teams Harry. coach, yeah, the special teams coach, Darren Simmons, telling, hey, you got to get down, get low. And a first and 10 from the 22, Palmer. On the short toss, it's Perry staying on his feet. And Perry out near the sideline picks up six. Fantasy Notebook, first half numbers. Palmer impressive, Dilfer impressive. Both in command and no major mistakes. And spreading the ball around. I think the Bengals want to be able to run the ball a bit better than they were able to run it in that first half. But Rudy Johnson certainly putting in work and did do a good job. But you can see Hush Mazzotta, Chad Johnson, each with four receptions. And, and the other guys for Cleveland, their wide receivers have also fallen up to that. 
Second and four now for Cincinnati. First possession of this second half. Palmer handled the rush. Palmer, soft toss. Beautiful touch to Hushmanzada. Right at midfield. Lee Bodden in coverage, 22-yard gain. Well, Bengals offense picking up where they left off in the first half, going over the middle to T.J. Hushmanzada, working in man-to-man -man coverage. Ball thrown just a little bit high, but what trust he has in T.J. Hushmanzada. You can see he's a big body and able to go over the middle. What a player. Coming off his breakout year, really blossomed last season, now in his fifth year out of Oregon State. On first and 10 from the 50, Rudy Johnson. And falling forward for a gain of seven. Chris Crocker, the first man there. Didn't look pretty, but all of a sudden you look up and Rudy Johnson's got himself seven yards on the ground. Yeah, Bob Bratkowski, the offense coordinator, one thing he's very good at, he's going to throw the ball around. Yeah, he's going to spread it around, get the ball to all the weapons, but he's not going to get away from giving the ball to Rudy Johnson. Can trust Rudy because he doesn't fumble the football often and very good at breaking tackles and making several defenders get him down. Five-year, $26 million deal for Johnson. It's a movement, and the Browns claiming that Cincinnati jumped. Ball start, offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, second down. And it is the veteran, Rich Bram. Broken fibula last year, the leader on this offensive line, along with Willie Anderson. Bram signing a two-year deal, savvy veteran. We'll back it up to a second and eight now from the 48. Here's Palmer. And a pump fake. Palmer now throwing on the run and finding his man, Chad Johnson, at the 40. It's at the marker and should be enough for a first down, depending on the spot. Chris Crocker, the tackle. You can see Palmer. He doesn't flinch against the blitz. Anytime there's pressure, oh, he's boy. able to move and slide and... Move the ball around. Chad Johnson just went down in the heat. Watch him. He's wincing in pain there. Now he's still on the ground. But Johnson was trying to get himself off the field, limping, and then went down to the turf. Training staff is out there to look at the Pro Bowl receiver. This is a nightmarish visual for Cincinnati Bengal fans with Chad Johnson being helped off the field and into the locker room. So Johnson now is not a factor with a first and ten for Cincinnati. Bengals still moving the football with ease. On the quick out from Chris Perry, and it popped out and out of bounds, fortunately, for Perry. This Thursday, two of the most popular pass survivors are coming back. Who are they? Find out when Survivor Guatemala premieres Thursday at 8, 7 Central, here on CBS, America's most watched network. Let's talk about Chad Johnson. It was tough to see what the issue was as they were working on the leg, the thigh area when he was out on the field. Yeah, and that means, you know, they're going to have to bring in Kelly Washington, who's going to get an opportunity. You know, Chris Henry, their other speedy receiver, is inactive today. So, we're going to have to get it done with the guys who are in the game right now. Washington not 100%. He's got a hamstring injury, but he's in there. Palmer throwing. And complete once again to Kevin Walter, who's making a statement here today. Michael Lehan had the coverage. We have seen so many different players in that secondary today for Cleveland with Bobby, Lehan, Crocker, Poole, Brian Russell, McCutcheon, Mickens. But Kevin Walter keeps doing the work. Third-year player out of Eastern Michigan. He's proven to be very reliable. I think Carson Palmer has shown tremendous amount of trust in the young player. And another first down. And off. And not much there for Rudy Johnson. Again, they go with a little bit of misdirection from... Some movement on the outside. Alvin McKinley makes the stop. It's a two-yard gain for Johnson. Clock is moving in this third quarter. Cincinnati 17, Cleveland 10, and the Bengals now have it at the Browns' 24-yard line. Palmer is 5-for-5 five five on this drive. Perry in the backfield. Brown has been taken out of it to some extent. Much more energetic in the first half. On the move, connection is made, and the spin move as Perry goes down. 
How about that? All they're <laughs> leaving the pocket. How about, getting the ball out to Perry. How about Perry understanding he was going to take a lick, really prepared, lowered his shoulder, able to make the play. Well, the victims of Hurricane Katrina on our mind in week one of the NFL. Here's a chance for you to help monetarily. 1-800-HELP-NOW is the phone number, or you can log on to www.redcross.org. On a third and two. Bengals will use a timeout. Out. Cincinnati. This is their first charge timeout. So two timeouts remaining for Cincinnati. They'll have it at the 18 of Cleveland facing a third and short when we return. Bengals 17, Browns 10, the NFL on CBS. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines, proud sponsor of the NFL and official airline of Super Bowl 40. Sony, transform the way you watch football with Sony, the world's greatest high-definition television. And by the Ford F-Series, built Ford tough. Browns fans getting re-energized at the 9.55 mark of the third quarter. Cincinnati at third and two of the Cleveland 18. Johnson and Johnson in the backfield. Palmer checking off. Crowd is getting louder. After the timeout, rush coming. Palmer gets rid of it for a first down. Breaking a tackle. Jeremy Johnson in for the touchdown. Ben Taylor whiffed. And the fullback hits Pater. How, how about Carson Palmer changing the play at the line of scrimmage? You see... Chris Crocker, he's the blitzing safety, and so they release the fullback against the blitz. Jeremy Johnson not only makes the catch, but breaks the tackle. That's what happens when you blitz a quarterback who understands the game. It's either feast or famine. You're going to blow up the play, or they're going to gash you for a touchdown. The go. poise and promise of Carson Palmer allowed it to happen for the Bengals' offense. Jeremy Johnson came in to training camp the best shape of his career has proven himself as a strong lead blocker for Rudy Johnson and now helps put Cincinnati in front 24 to 10 9 48 to go on the third the Bengals offense continues to go up and down the field against this Cleveland D and with Cincinnati 24 Cleveland 10 Bengals offense just Hit Cleveland in the mouth. And Palmer, once again, on the drive is perfect, going seven for seven. Yeah, this offense is pretty good. I think they showed us last year when they went on a run, and now they're picking up where they left off. Kickoff from Shane Graham. Ruben Drones, the return man from the five. Brown's looking for something to get them going. It's not going to come on this play as he dives across the 20-yard line. NFL.com. Poll question, which offensive rookie will make the biggest impact this season? Will it be Benson, Brown, Edwards, Williams, or another Williams? Or will another emerge? You can cast your vote at NFL.com. Solomon will cast his vote. Those guys will be good, but I'm going to go with J.J. Arrington, the running back for the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to go Carnell Williams. Go Carnell? Yeah. How about another will emerge? How, it just made it simple. <laughs> Someone else. Well, you've now taken the rest of the field in my mind. Yeah, you've got a better <laughs> chance than I do to actually get this one right. But I named the guy. You did. You did. That's true. <laughs> Deflected ball batted down by Brian Simmons. So the veteran who's still a part of this Cincinnati defense and providing leadership for young Odell Thurman. Thurman told us yesterday Simmons has been his go-to guy if he has questions and the two of them have developed a nice chemistry. And I think Brian Simmons is an underrated linebacker in the National Football League, always making big plays. He's equally good in pass coverage as he is against the run, and so they're going to keep him around for a long time to help groom the so many young linebackers around him. He is the veteran of the group. And a second and 10 now from the 21. Dilford throws to hot and intercepted. Picked off by Odell Thurman. And who made the hit? Brian Simmons was able to make the crunch, and the ball is deflected. And his teammate, who we also spoke 
about is Odell Thurman. He makes the play. Now watch Brian Simmons talk about he makes so many big plays. Look at the hit. And the ball just caroms right off the hand of Terrell Smith, the fullback. And big plays now being made by the Bengals defense. So Odell Thurman, what a passionate player. Well, he couldn't sit still when we talked to him yesterday, mm -hmm. anticipating his very first pro game in the National Football League. Yeah, he couldn't wipe that smile that you just saw off his face during our meeting either. And look at where Cincinnati takes over. On the pitch, Rudy Johnson looking for some blockers, and he's forced out of bounds. He picks up five yards. Drive starting at the 13. Johnson out at the 8. And now Cincinnati looking to really put Cleveland in a hole. Georgia on my mind. If you're Cincinnati, you like the state of Georgia right now. And you, and you like David Pollock and Odell Thurman. What they share, not only having gone to the University of Georgia, but they're passionate players who love playing the game. They even love going to practice. And that's why I think this Bengals defense, they will be good, particularly in the later part of the season once they get experience. On second down, Johnson gets wrapped up. Orpheus Roy, first man there, but he is still able to pick up three yards as he carries just shy of the five-yard line. And one more point about the defense. We talk about the fact that they're very young. We showed you Pollock and, and Odell Thurman. Uh, the fact is, we thought they would struggle a little bit today, this defense, because they have so many young players. But I believe by the midway mark, this is a defense that will need to be reckoned with because they will make big plays because their players are very energetic and very good football players. On a third and two, Palmer looking to add to the lead. Fires back of the end zone, incomplete. And the intended receiver, Kelly Washington. We just received word, Chad Johnson, leg cramp. His return is probable, so a good, good sign for Bengal fans right now in the Cincinnati team. And Kelly Washington, I think, has to fight for that ball, have to fight to get position on the safety. Chris Crocker, come back to the ball, try to create some contact. The ball may have been deflected a little bit by a defender, but Palmer showing excellent confidence in all of his weapons, whether it's Chad Johnson, Kevin Walter, and that time, Kelly Washington. 23-yard field goal, and that's a chippy for Shane Graham. Cincinnati takes a 27-10 lead. So more points off of turnovers. Cincinnati building on its advantage. So what's the NFL on CBS is sponsored by KFC's new flavor station. When your wings are dipped any way you want, you're in charge. Be the boss. Choose your sauce at KFC. Cincinnati 27, Cleveland 10, 17 unanswered points for the Bengals. After the Thurman interception, Bengals get a 23-yard field goal from Shane Graham. And now Graham to kick it off. Drones is back deep. From two yards deep in the end zone, Drones takes it out. And he crosses the 30-yard line. That's where Cleveland will take over. Mondays this fall, see why critics are raving about the new comedy, How I Met Your Mother, premiering Monday, September 19th, on CBS, America's most watched network. The Solomon. What happened? This game was 10-10. <laughs> you look up, it's 27-10. Well, a couple of turnovers by the Cleveland Brown offense. Trent Dilfer with a fumble, and then the interception off the hand of his fullback, Terrell Smith, has changed the complexion of the game. We'll, get, we'll talk about the defense and how they're also culpable. Ruben Drones carries, and he picks up five yards on first down. Robert Gathers able to make the stop. Romeo Cornell making his NFL head coaching debut. Nick Saban in Miami. Longtime collegiate head coach and Mike Nolan getting his opportunity out in San Francisco, the rookie head coaches in the NFL this season. All three former defensive coaches, and so we know defense wins championships. Romeo Cornell knows that as an assistant five time Super Bowl winner, so he wants to get his defense on track here in Cleveland where they can start talking about getting into the post. On second down, Ruben Drones, who had that big run to start play today, but we have not seen him rip off any long one since, and he's a little slow to get up. 
Robert Gathers making the tackle. Simmons slow to get up as well, and he may need a replacement as he's able to walk off the field. When you talk about what happened in this game, Cleveland was certainly hanging in there on the scoreboard. I think their defense is struggling to get off the field. They can't stop the Cincinnati Bengals offense. They, they can't put pressure on the quarterback, can't tackle the runner, can't cover the receivers. Other than that, they're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're really looking at the bright side. Third and two. Here's Dilfer. And that one to a wide open Brian. He's unable to make the connection. And Dilfer has to know that one's on him. Yeah, he, he has to stand in there. He was under pressure. Robert Gathers came off that right end. Brian Robinson also in the backfield. So they're getting pressure on Dilfer. But as a veteran quarterback, you have to stand in there, take the hit. They're going to hit you anyway. You may as well go ahead and complete the pass. You see, he's not happy. He knows he should have gotten the ball to Bryant, who was wide open on the play. And Dilfer is 0 for his last five after the strong start. Richardson to punt. And the Cleveland offense has gone stagnant. Kiwan Ratliff, return man, backpedaling. Win it, And exactly where he wanted it, at the five. And we'll see if this Cleveland defense can get something going, a penalty marker on the play. It's out of the 49-yard line. Palmer right now is having his way with his Cleveland defense. And we talked to him yesterday. He said, you know, I expect to see some surprises from a Romeo Cornell defense. Hasn't been surprised Holding at all today. Kicking team, 54. 10 yard end of the run. First down. So a penalty called against Cleveland. They had gotten it back to the five-yard line, but a 10-yard penalty is the call. We'll come back. More of the Bengals and Browns on CBS. Fear of survivors. 16 new castaways get the surprise of their lives. And if you're expecting a big twist, there won't be one. There'll be two. Only four days until Survivor Guatemala begins Thursday at 8, 7 Central here on CBS. Well, during that timeout, Cincinnati determined that they want Cleveland to re-kick. They did not want the 10 yards tacked on. And that's what the Browns are going to have to do. Jerry Rosberg, the Browns special teams coach, fired up. Well, they're betting that Kyle Richardson will not execute another superb punt as he did on the previous when it went out on the five-yard line. They moved the Browns back 10 yards because of the penalty. And Kiwan Ratliff returnable from the 15. Ratliff to the outside. Makes one more cut and then forced out of bounds at the 24. As he is spun around like a top 55-yard punt. And a nine-yard return. They certainly improved their field position. Excellent choice by Marvin Lewis. Would have had the ball at the 15. They're going to get it right around that 25-yard line. And Carson Palmer, see what he did in the first quarter? 41 yards passing, and ever since then, as you said, Ian, has been on fire. Well, Palmer told us that he feels completely different than a year ago. Feels more like a vet. Now he knows how to approach the season. A year ago, that, that air of mystery was still a product. Chad Johnson is out there. And they're going to try to get him involved. So Johnson, the leg cramp. And he picks up two yards on the first down throw. Dalen McCutcheon, the tackle. We head to New York. Check in with Greg Gump. Hey, I am down in Miami. The Dolphins trying to win their home opener for rookie coach Nick Saban. Gus Farratt, two yards to Randy McMichael with the extra point. Miami with a 13-3 lead on Denver. 440 to play in the third. All right, thanks very much. Rookie head coaches, Romeo Cornell here, Nick Saban in Miami. Dalen McCutcheon missed five weeks of practice with a re recurring headaches, dizziness, and he is grabbing at his head right now. So the assumption is that this is an offset of what his preseason troubles were, and he's headed to the sideline where Ray Mickens will come in to replace him. Remember, Browns are already down their best 
defensive back, and that's Gary Baxter. It and was Gar yeah, Gary Baxter suffered a concussion in a preseason game in August against the Detroit Lions. So he also suffering from head injuries, and so your two best corners out. You wonder why they are struggling to really keep these Bengals wide receivers in front of them today. Defensive coordinator Todd Grantham getting the job when Romeo Cornell made his decisions on assistant coaches. Handoff Rudy Johnson. And Johnson falls forward for four. Alvin McKinley the tackle. We're heading back to New York as we get another update from Greg. Hey, Ian, in Pittsburgh, the Steeler backups might be licking their chops from five yards out. Veron Hayes for the touchdown and a 34 to 7 lead for the Steelers over Tennessee 13 27 to play in regulation. Well there goes that preseason rustiness from the offense for Pittsburgh. <laughs> no Bettis no Deuce Staley but they're still able to run the ball. That's because that Pittsburgh Steeler offensive line is still very good. Coming up on five minutes to go in the third. Palmer comfortable in the pocket and picked off. Intercepted this Cleveland defense needed a big play. Lee Bobby spinning his way in for the touchdown. There's going to be a flag down in the secondary on the opposite side of the field. It is thrown at the 44 yard line. And the problem is it had nothing to do with the play to the ball side. Remember Dennis Northcutt had a punt return called back early. That wow. cost Cleveland. Illegal hands to the face. 23 defense. And wow. it's the veteran Ray Mickens who was released by the Jets in the preseason and Mickens gets called on the penalty. Now this is at the bottom clear on the other side of the field. The ball is going to be thrown to the left side. But well, watch the hand now. Hey, I saw nothing. there. <laughs> I'm assuming we were going to see something from Ray Mickens. I didn't see a thing. Now, that's very unfortunate for the Cleveland Browns because they did make an excellent play with the interception, the return for a touchdown, and Romeo Cornell has to be beside himself because we were saying that they needed to make a play against this Bengals offense, and that proved to be the play. Instead of what would now be a 10-point wow. differential, Cincinnati gets a first down on a play that had nothing to do I saw with what happened. I, and I saw it was enough. a phantom, phantom penalty. Unless there was contact beforehand that we just didn't see. And off Rudy Johnson, he is hit. And then goes down as Orlando Ruff makes the stop. So you have two touchdowns called back because of penalties. And I think what you want to see if you're Romeo Cornell, you don't want to see your football team feeling sorry for itself. Saying, hey, we had the game taken away. You want to continue the fight. You want to see your defensive player still get an attitude, be up in the bit at stopping this Cincinnati Bengals offense. Second and seven now for the Bengals. Flea flicker. And this play's going to break down. Palmer, sack, Chris Crocker. A loss of eight for Cincinnati. Yeah, they're going to blitz Chris Crocker. You see him coming down from the bottom of your screen, 25 to flea flicker but the flea flicker play needs a lot of time to develop the wrong play to run when you're blitzing off the corner Crocker gets home I've been impressed with his play not just today but throughout the preseason you watch him on tape Sean Jones was initially slated as the starter at the beginning of preseason Crocker's just come in and performed very well very smart very aggressive the kind of player that Romeo Cornell liked Crocker had a shoulder injury last year did start some though at strong safety. On third and long, Palmer underneath asking Chris Perry to get to the first down marker. He will not. Perry comes up just shy, and Cincinnati's going to punt with 342 and counting left in the third. Well, credit to Cleveland Brown defense. They did not fall. You could have expected them to. Just let the wind out of their sail after getting the interception and a touchdown, getting it called back because of the penalty. Came back on the next three downs and get the stop against the Bengals offense, forcing the punt. Kyle Larson with Dennis Northcutt waiting. We saw Northcutt go 73 yards earlier, only to have a penalty negated. And Northcutt's going to let it roll. 
into the end zone, just barely. Coming down the field. Tab Perry unable to knock it back. Tonight on CBS, how will they create order out of chaos in New Orleans? Find out on 60 Minutes, followed by Cold Case, then George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts lead an all-star cast. Ocean's 11, that's tonight on CBS. And now, if you're the Cleveland Browns, you are still in this game. It's still the third quarter, down by 17. The offense has to get something going. And I didn't expect them to get away from the run game. With this much time, I'd still continue to use Ruben Drones and William Green to hammer away, but get the ball in the hands of Antonio Bryant. On a first and ten, play action. Dilfer throwing, juggled, and caught by Hyden. To the 40-yard line, 20 yards going up high to get it. This is not the play you expect from Hyden. This is what you do with your speed tight ends, but look at Hyden. He is a big target, stays with it, catches that ball, and is able to secure it before he hits the ground. Just showing some athleticism. We know he's a big target underneath, but... What a play made by Hyden as he's banged up. Came down hard on that left shoulder. And already short-handed at tight end because of the injury to Aaron Shea. First, first down of the second half for Cleveland. On a handoff, Ruben Drones. Odell Thurman the stop, three-yard gain for Drones. Boy, Thurman is a wicked tackler. I talked to him yesterday. I said, what linebackers did you study the most and sort of, you know, model your game after? He mentioned Derek Brooks of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Jeremiah Trotter from the Philadelphia Eagles, who he says, hey, he plays downhill as an instant tackler once he makes contact. He said, but you can't talk about the middle yeah. linebacker position without mentioning Ray Lewis. And I can see some of all of those players in Odell. Okay, Cohen. I'll get out of your way. I'll get out of your On a second and seven now with a minute 40 to go in the third. Dilfer fires. Almost wow. picked off. Madea Williams jumping in front of Antonio Bryant. Are well, you talk about young players? Remember last year the Bengals played with a lot of young guys. Madea Williams started as a rookie in his first game. Now this is just reading the quarterback, understanding how to match up against the routes. On the hook play, you have to be aware of where Antonio Bryant is. See him break early before the ball is thrown. Now he just has to make the catch. And that's where I'm sure he's upset with himself because he understood the route combination and broke before the ball was thrown. That's why he got there in time. On a third and seven now. Out of the shotgun, Dilford. Browns could use a conversion here. And Dilford throws to the open man. Antonio Bryant along that sideline into Cincinnati territory, and this drive remains alive. And this time they caught the Bengals in man-to-man -man coverage, beating Delta O'Neill. Thursday, September 22nd on CBS, don't miss TV's next great thriller. Mandy Patinkin, Shamar Moore, and Thomas Gibson star in Criminal Minds. That premieres Thursday, September 22nd on CBS, America's most watched network. Line of scrimmage is now the 43-yard line. Bryant. In the go-to guy for Dilford today. And over the middle and dropped. It is Steve Hyden who came back onto the field and now shaking that right hand. And Hyden's going to head off to the sideline. And a drop pass, more than anything, will really disrupt the flow you have on offense. Trent Dilfer right now getting into rhythm and you talk about him trusting Antonio Bryant. He throws it to Bryant. It's nearly intercepted by Medea Williams. He goes back to Bryant again and beats Delta O'Neill in man-to-man coverage. So right now the Cleveland offense is on the attack. Second and 10. 102 to go in the third. Handoff. Drone stays on his feet. And just a little bit shy of the first down line. Kevin Case Fahorn, first time that we've called his name today. That's a nine-yard gain for Drones before Case Fahorn made the stop. And credit Maurice Carthon, their offensive coordinator, for sticking with the running game. We said you have to continue to feed it to Ruben Drones. And you saw the patience uh, he had setting up his blocks on that left side, the offensive line, getting excellent push. He was very patient, very poised, running strong, difficult to tackle, creating the third and one very short situation. Cleveland's moving the ball with great confidence. On a third and one, 
Is it going to be enough? Justin Smith wow. will stop. And he does not appear to have it. A little pushing and shoving after the play. Well, Justin Smith from that left defensive end position just slanted right down inside and put a lick on Ruben Drones. So now it's going to be decision time with the third quarter coming to an end. It's either fourth and less than a yard or a long field goal with Cincinnati up big. Every survivor has a secret. I was in the NFL for 11 years. My real name is Gary Ogaboom. Hi, and Eagles, Solomon Wilcox, the rest of our CBS crew, start of the fourth quarter. Romeo Cornell deciding to go for it on fourth and one from the 34. Dilfer under pressure. He throws incomplete. Frisman Jackson, the intended receiver. And Justin Smith and the Bengals have held the Browns. I don't understand why you're throwing the ball here. He wanted to go to the left side, but when his initial receiver was covered by Torrey James, they're forced to just throw the ball in the ground. How will they create order out of chaos in New Orleans? Find out as Ed Bradley takes us through the battered city. 60 Minutes, tonight. Rivalry that dates back to 1970. The Cincinnati Bengals are trying to get off on the right foot with a victory on opening day. Their defense just made a play. Cleveland went for it on fourth and one. Unsuccessful, and now Cincinnati takes over. Coleman. Play action, throws to a spot, juggled, and dropped. T.J. Hushmanzada had the opportunity. Let's go back, Solomon, to the Cleveland decision. Why? Why through the air? I don't like the play by design. It was only uh, one option for Trent Dilfer to the other side of the field. Wanted to go to Antonio Bryant, and it was a three-step drop, so the play has to be open right away. Torrey James had him covered. From there, the play was dead in the water because there was pressure in the face of Trent Dilfer. He was forced to get rid of it. I would have liked to see him run the ball for one yard and try to use the power behind the left side of that offensive line to pick up the first down. Second and ten. We are just underway in the fourth quarter with the Bengals in front, 27 to 10. Palmer. Protection is there, throwing underneath to Rudy Johnson. And that's a seven-yard gain to the 40-yard line. NFL Today earlier had Jerry Rice on, future Hall of Famer. Next week, another future Hall of Famer, Leslie Visser with a sit-down with Brett Favre for the Green Bay Packers. Everything that's been going on down in the Louisiana, Mississippi area, that'll be a topic of conversation. And you know, Favre maybe one last ride into the sunset here this year to try to win a Super Bowl. That's next week. On the NFL today, Brett Favre with Leslie Visser. On the pitch, Chris Perry, shy of a first down. Lee Bodden making that play as Perry got bunched up along the near side. It's a gain of one. It's a great play by Lee Bodden because we had the, the left tackle, Levi Jones, pulling on the play, and Bodden just jumped right inside and got inside of him. You're going to see the play is going to come out here. And then Biden's going to jump underneath to make the tackle. Watch how they flip it out to Perry. And see, watch him make the play. Get inside of the big guy. Use your quickness to beat the bigger offensive player and still make a tackle. Save the first down. Kyle Larson, the punt. Dennis Northcutt. He's got some space to work with. Looking for some blocking. And along that sideline, it just ran out of room. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Eight-yard return. 44-yard punt. Hot day for fake fur. 27 to 10 Cincinnati. <laughs> the NFL on CBS is sponsored by Rome. Don't miss HBO's new dramatic series, Rome. Check your local listings. Verizon Wireless. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. And by Rocky Mountain Refreshing Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL and Super Bowl 40. 
13.20 to go, fourth quarter. Cincinnati 27, Cleveland 10. Browns with a first and 10 at the 24-yard line, a game that they were very much in. Late second quarter, Cincinnati begins to pull away. And that pass is intercepted. Dilfer picked off by Juwan Ratliff, staying on his feet. And then finally brought down at the 39-yard line. So a day that started out with so much promise for the Browns on offense and now is you grown see, sour. Yeah, and you see why there's high hopes for this Bengals defense. He's matched up against Braylon Edwards. Kewan Ke Ratliff takes the inside position. And so Trent Dilfer's trying to throw the ball over his head, but what speed to close on the ball by Ratliff and then the ball skills to become the receiver himself and make the play. Played a lot as a rookie last year. And you can see why he's the nickel corner. <laughs> he gets his first career interception. He's a fine football player. Number of young players over the last two years in the NFL draft joining this Bengals defense. Ratliff, a second round pick out of Florida last year. They like the fact that he can be fearless at times out there and makes plays, as you said. First and 10, Palmer. Out of the pocket, flagged down, stripped for the ball, and a turnover. Scooped up as Sean Thompson knocked it free. Ruff has got it for Cleveland. And if it's holding on Cincinnati, this play is going to stand. Yeah, Carson Palmer got careless with the football. As he got out of the pocket, became a little bit more comfortable. Didn't sense the presence holding. of the defensive players. Number 71, offense. Penalty is declined. Yeah. First down. Hold against Willie Anderson. And the turnover stands. Cleveland will take over. Carson Palmer has to protect the football, leaving the door open for the Cleveland Browns to get back in this game. Lots of Friday. Coming up after football, the Men's U.S. Open Championship. Number one in the world, defending champ Roger Federer taking on Legendary Andre Agassi looking for his third career U.S. Open title. It's coming up after football here on CBS. Cleveland takes over with a first and ten at the 42. Dilfer out of the shotgun over the middle of Frisman Jackson. And into Cincinnati territory at the 45-yard line. That's a 13-yard pass play. Dilfer communicating with Maurice Carthon along the sideline. Both coordinators are out on the sideline, not up in the booth for Cleveland. Well, that's because they want to look the players in the eyes, be down on the sideline to coach them when they do come off the field. And because they have a football team where they have so many players, they have to get onto the same page. I think it's a good idea to Time do out. so. Cincinnati. 26 new players on the roster, nine rookies for the Browns. And the first time in his career, Maurice Carthon, where he is calling the plays. He has been an offensive coordinator, but it's the first time that he's calling the plays on game day. And a timeout taken. Hey, critics call Threshold tense, intelligent, and scary. Don't miss the premiere of Threshold, Friday at 9, 8 Central, here on CBS, America's most watched network. So the Browns make across the board changes during this offseason, Solomon, trying to improve on this 4 and 12 record from a year ago, change the culture of this team. Did you like the moves they made, starting with their head coach and their GM, Cornell and Savage? Oh, I love Phil Savage because he's excellent when it comes to personnel and selecting players. Did a fabulous job with Ozzie Newsome with the Baltimore Ravens. We know Romeo Cornell can coach, and we know he has an excellent blueprint for a championship defense. Now he has to find the players and the personnel to fit into that scheme. And you'll see this team improve. Out of the shotgun, Zilfer, low throw, and handled nicely. How about the game that Frisman Jackson has put together? Everybody was talking about Antonio Bryan and North and Braylon Edwards, the young rookie coming in. It's been Frisman Jackson who's gotten it done. Six catches, 109 yards, and a touchdown for the unsung Western Illinois product. Second and two. Spread the field. Five receiver set. Dilfer. Browns are moving the ball. Jackson again. And another first down for Cleveland as he dives inside the 30 of Cincinnati. And Dilfer is finding that he can trust Frisman Jackson. He's a big body guy, but very quick. 
And the Bengals defensive backs, they can't get a jam on him at the line of scrimmage because he is so strong, but then showing quickness to slash underneath the covers where Gilfer is finding him wide open. Out of the gun, Gilfer on a cross, complete again. It's the Frisman Jackson show right now for Cleveland. That's 11 yards. And that time working against the middle linebacker on that play. So I think it was Landon Johnson who's now coming off the field, but right now this Cleveland offense is getting some rhythm. And a first and 10 from the 18. It's someone other than Jackson, Dennis Northcutt. And Kiwan Ratliff brings him down. Looks like about a loss of two on the play as Northcote was trying to create after the catch. And now as you get inside the red zone, your play options are more limited. You either go up top on a fade route, try to get your receiver one-on-one -on -one against a cornerback, get over the top, or you're going to have to power it in. And with all the plays on Maurice Carthon's sheet, he's going to have to limit it to those red zone plays and try to get more power running game going to knock the Bengals back off the ball. Now a okay. second and 12. Rush is coming. They handle it initially. Gilfer has the time. Gilfer out of the pocket. Looking to run and out of bounds. He chased by Kevin Case for who took a whack at the football. And it's a three-yard gain on the scramble by Trent Dilfer. And see, that play was dead in the water. They ran a two-man route up in the left-hand corner of the end zone, and the Bengals had it covered excellently. And so the thing is, what? does Trent Dilfer have to do? Nowhere to go with the ball. So he tries to run. We know he's not a mobile quarterback. And they're able to run him down. Fortunate for Trent, he's able to stumble forward for three yards. On a third and nine now for the Browns. Rush coming. Dilfer hit as he throws. And incomplete. Heavy duty heat provided by Kevin Casevahard. And now the Browns are going to attempt a field goal. And that, yeah, Bengals blitz that time on Trent Dilfer, forcing him to make a quick decision. Didn't make it quick enough. Got rid of the ball, but, boy, did he take a pop. You could see, once again, Cleveland Browns offense becoming very stagnant inside the red zone. He said that the play selection would be limited. They just don't have the stuff once they get into the red zone, but do give credit to the Bengals on defense. 35-yard attempt for Phil Dawson. Got a contract extension during the offseason, and that field goal is good. Browns close the gap a bit, but still trail. 27 to 13 now, Cincinnati leads. That ought to do it. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? And by Under Armour Performance Apparel. We must protect this house. Apparently shirts are optional here today in Cleveland with Cincinnati in front, 27 to 13. Eight play, 41 yard drive. They had a rhythm going with the Dilfer to Jackson combination only to be thwarted once they got inside the 20 yard line. Dawson to kick off, Tab Perry is the deep man from the goal line. Perry, oh, he's got some room. Let's see if he's got the speed. Perry sheds Dawson and takes it to the 49. Well, the last time these two teams met, November the 28th, 58 to 48, Cincinnati a winner at home. 106 points combined, second most in NFL history. Just a wild shootout. It's what you call a track meet. And I thought both teams would be north of 20 points in this game today for the reasons we talked about. New defense being installed with the Cleveland Browns and then the youth and inexperience at key positions on the defense for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati looking for a long, time-consuming drive right now. With a 14-point lead. Handoff to Rudy Johnson. And Johnson bringing a crowd with him for a gain of four. Yeah, Johnson, again, nothing flashy today, and that's basically how it was last year. But you look up, he's got a touchdown. He's got 80 yards on the ground. Odds are he'll keep carrying the football with Cincinnati 
holding on to that two touchdown advantage. And remember, he's a guy that replaced a player like Corey Dillon. Not an easy task. And I give credit to Marvin Lewis for having the courage to send a guy like Corey Dillon packing. Of course, he has a Super Bowl ring now. But you replace him with an unknown guy like Rudy Johnson. He says, hey, we reward the guys who work hard. That's what Rudy has done. Second and six. Lays it out for Chad Johnson. We told you earlier that Johnson's injury was nothing more than a cramp. Odds are he went back to the locker room, probably got an IV, something like that. Some more fluids, and, and that's typical on opening day. Many of the players, they get into a game, and it's still hot. We're still in the summer season, so the players, their adrenaline is flowing, and many of them haven't played in a four-quarter football game since the final game of last season. Many of them only play maybe three quarters in the third preseason game, but most of that, they've been resting. First and ten for the Bengals. And Johnson shooting through the middle for a six-yard gain. Rudy Johnson, last year, 1,454 yards on the ground. That's a franchise record. Also, 361 carries showed his durability, his ability to break tackles, and got a five-year, $26 million deal out of it. Well, you know what? We talked about him replacing Corey Dillon. Them having the best season any runner back has ever had in the history of the Cincinnati Bengals. So that's really earning your keep and, and helping the coaches feel like they made the right decision. And the Bengals now have it at the 30-yard line of Cleveland trying to put this game away. On the quick throw, Chad Johnson accelerating. And Johnson to the 20-yard line. That's a gain of 10. And another first down for the Bengals as we head to New York. Greg Gumbel, the update. Hey, Ian, how about them Miami Dolphins? Gus Farratt. His second touchdown pass of the day, Marty Booker, goes 60 quick yards. Denver has never won in Miami. The work cut out for him if they're going to do it today. 27-10 Dolphins, under eight minutes to play in the fourth. Uh, it's the great thing, Greg, about sports in general, the NFL specifically. You, you show up week one, you've got perceptions, you've got ideas of how it's going to go, and then a score like that pops up, and it changes the way that you view things. Miami, great effort under Nick Saban in his NFL head coaching debut. The pass from Palmer to Chad Johnson. And right now, Cincinnati just mixing and matching on the ground through the air. Palmer has looked so comfortable throughout the day, and it looks like they're going in for more points. Well, it's like seven on seven for the quarterback. No pass rush. That's typically you have your receivers and your running backs just throwing against the linebackers and defensive backs. There's literally no pass rush right now, no pressure on Carson Palmer so he's very comfortable and just throwing one ball after another instant strike over to Chad Johnson on first down from the 10 and off Rudy Johnson and he picks up four yards up the gut down to 555 and counting in the fourth quarter Cleveland had a couple of opportunities chance to get back into it but Cincinnati has done enough on offense and, and Rudy Johnson is one of the reasons why they can't get pressure on the quarterback so far on this drive three run plays three pass plays so the balance that the offense has right now is keeping this defense really guessing and they're off balance themselves not knowing what to expect second and goal from the six Palmer gets rid of it and intercepted Lee Bodden penalty marker on the play Fisk was applying the pressure on Palmer as he got rid of the football well I don't care how good you are as a quarterback you get pressure on the quarterback as Jason Fisk does the there shift, 85 against the offense penalties decline touchback first down well, some signs of life for Cleveland and yeah. for Marvin Lewis. He knew this was the chance to put the game away. Watch number 95, Fisk, put the pressure on Carson Palmer, forcing the bad throw. Palmer would do a better job of just eating that pass, but he throws it up and give Lee Bott credit for going up, securing the interception. And they continue to leave the door open for the Cleveland Browns to get back into the game. Fisk, free agent signing from San Diego. John Kittner will have a little chat with Palmer. And yeah, think about it, Solomon. Last year, 
the difference often between a Roethlisberger and a Palmer, Roethlisberger obviously going on to the great rookie season, he didn't make the big mistake late in games. Palmer did, and that's a trend you want to see reversed. Yeah, Cincinnati's got the lead, and we'll talk more about it. But again, a fourth quarter mistake by Palmer as Ruben Drone gets involved in the passing game on first down. And the key is, with Roethlisberger, he had an excellent defense to cover up Agreed. those mistakes. Agreed. When you have a defense like the Pittsburgh Steelers have, you can make mistakes like that and not have it come back to bite you. Now let's see if the Bengals defense has improved from a year ago to protect their quarterback, Carson Palmer. Yeah, he made a mistake late in the game when they could have put the game on ice. And now Trent Dilfer is working against this Bengals defense, looking to make them pay for it. Shotgun, second and four. Handoff throws. There you go. Staying on his feet. And he crosses the 40-yard line. That just looked strange as the ball came into his grasp. Feels like he juggled it. And Ruben Drones avoids a cough up and picks up 17 yards. Well, he's a fine runner. And he's proven why he was worth trading for because he's been very effective himself running the football today. Hurry up offense. Dilford throwing into double coverage and complete. Raylan Edwards has got his second catch of the day. In between the 20s. The Cleveland Brown offense have been very effective. It's down inside the red zone where they tend to stall. They're going with a four wide receiver set, and they're finding that it's giving the Bengals nickel and dime defense a lot of trouble. They're not getting pressure on Trent Dilfer. Brown still have three timeouts to work with. Now a little bit of pressure. Dilfer rolling. Dilfer throwing. He was out of the pocket, so able to throw it away as Justin Smith was trying to chase him down. You know, and so often quarterbacks are very quick to get out of the pocket. I thought he could have hung in there. Look, there's everyone is on their block. And see, watch how he escapes to the right. He gives Justin Smith a perfect angle to come over and make the tackle. All he had to do was back up and get more depth in the pocket to buy more time. His willingness to get out of the pocket, showing a lack of patience, that's what provided the pressure by Justin Smith. You know, Dilfer rejuvenated to get his chance at being a starter again, and he looked good early, then went through a stretch in the third quarter where he couldn't find a receiver. Trying to pick it up here in the fourth. Looks coming. High throw, and should have been intercepted. Torrey James, who had eight picks last year, knows that that one should have been it. Uh, that was an opportunity to put the game on ice as well. Watch the blitz. Kiwan Ratliff never seen balls up. If he just catches this ball, Torrey James is wide open on that side of the field. And he, he, he must have known it, anticipating a run for a touchdown and not able to secure the football. We know he can catch the ball with eight interceptions a year ago. But if he catches that one, he's going to return it for a touchdown. And now Cleveland in a situation where they have to go for it. They trail by two touchdowns, under four minutes left. They are on Cincinnati's side of the field at a fourth and two. Another rush and broken up. Dennis Northcutt in a matchup with Delta O'Neill, tight coverage. And once again, Cincinnati has held and Dilfer forced back to his sideline. And, and at the snap of the ball, I'm thinking you have to anticipate an inside breaking route by the receiver because that's what Cleveland's been doing all day when they get to that four wide receiver set. Delta O'Neal understanding that made the adjustment, anticipated the play, and he's there to break it up without drawing a flag. So here you see the veteran presence of Delta O'Neal making the play to get the Bengals defense off the field. 349 left in this fourth quarter. And now Cincinnati with a 14-point lead. We'll go to the ground game. Rudy Johnson out across midfield in the Cleveland territory for a gain of five. Brian Russell, the free safety, will be given credit for the stop. U.S. Open Men's Championship. Tennis at the National Tennis Center in Flushing Meadow. Roger Federer, number one player in the world against Andre Agassi, who's going to have overwhelming crowd support in New York City. That's coming up next here on CBS. You know, in baseball, the guy who comes out of the bullpen at the end of the game, he's called a closer. Mm -hmm. He's the guy to save the day. Rudy Johnson is a closer because it's tough to tackle, tough to get on the ground, and he can extend the drive and kill the clock with three minutes left in this game and close it out. And off again to Rudy, keeps the legs churning, and he picks up the first down. We had a nice conversation yesterday with Willie Anderson, uh, who throughout the years 
has really been a go-to guy during down Stellar. seasons for the Bengals. You know you could rely on him and, and get answers. And you know, Willie said, hey, offensive lineman, we don't have stats. <laughs> so we have to live vicariously through the running back. And we want Rudy Johnson to be 1,500 yards plus and be considered among the elite. Well, he's proud of Rudy. You know, they both went to Auburn. He's like a big brother to Rudy and helped cultivate and nurture him as a young football player. And it's nice to see the running back in their offensive line having such great chemistry. And keep feeding the ball to Rudy Johnson. That's a five-yard gain. Rudy has cracked the 100-yard mark, something he grew quite accustomed to last year. And I thought you see Bob Bratkowski continue to feed the ball to Rudy after that interception by Carson Palmer. He understands how to put this game on ice. Give it to your big running back. So many people want the running backs who can hit the home run, who has that flash, but you need a strong runner like Rudy to kill a clock and put games away. Coming up tonight on CBS, how will they create order out of chaos in New Orleans? Find out tonight on 60 Minutes. That'll be followed by Cold Case, then George Clooney, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts. It's an all-star cast. Ocean's 11 tonight on CBS. You know, at the top of the show today, we talked about Romeo Cornell making his NFL debut as a head coach, and there will be better days than this. And from the Cincinnati standpoint, we talked about the stability within the organization. Marvin Lewis faced a similar challenge two years ago, taking over this franchise. And all of a sudden, now, they're a popular pick by many people in the AFC. Rudy Johnson is brought down with 2.06 to go, and that's something new for the Bengals to be talked about in positive tones before a season begins. Hasn't happened in quite some time. Cincinnati, two minutes away from opening the season with a win. What happened? I get into A year ago, the Cleveland Browns won their opener, then went on to lose eight of their next 10 games. And meanwhile, Cincinnati has been so poor in the month of September. Since 1991, a record of 11 and 41 in September games, and then 11 and 42 in October games. As the flag comes down, Rudy Johnson, another carry through the middle. Well, it's tough to play a season when it's over <laughs> in the first month of yeah. the season. Yeah, before you look it's up, it's literally over. You say, okay, we're out of the playoff race. And Cincinnati started one and four last year. Holding. Offense, 63. 10-yard penalty, still first down. You know, the other issue for Marvin Lewis, and this is true of any team that's trying to take that next step, Solomon, can you become consistent on the road? So you know, for Marvin, 3-5 and five last year away from home, a divisional win here in week one, and you do it away from home. I think, it, and you're right, the road games are going to be important. And then how well they sure, play absolutely. inside the division in terms of defending the run. They were 2-4 and four last year, yep. and they struggled to stop runners like Jerome Bettis. They struggle against the Baltimore Ravens and Jamal Lewis. So how they fare inside the division really is going to tell us a lot about this football team. On first and 20, Rudy Johnson goes down after the gain of three. You know, Marvin Lewis put a digital clock in the locker room in Cincinnati, counting down to the opening kickoff, reminding his players constantly how important it was to get off to the good start. U.S. Open Men's Championship is coming up. Roger Federer against Andre Agassi here on CBS. And you, know, you asked him yesterday, you said, hey, has that been the recurring theme? Is that what you've been pounding home to these players? You said, yeah, well, I did it last year, too, and it didn't <laughs> work. So, you know, no, no one's going to tell me that you know, just because you keep doing it, it necessarily leads to a win. This time it actually did. But he certainly does have to emphasize to his players and create a sense of urgency that, hey, we have to begin the season, you know, with our heads focused and bent on playing well. Next week they play host to the Minnesota Vikings. And if you were to go around Cincinnati and ask everyone in town, they say, hey, we better win the season opener against Cleveland. That was the expectation. Johnson's trying to shed tacklers. And he picks up four yards on the play. Meanwhile, Cleveland will be at Green Bay, a game you can see right here on CBS. How about the other perspective now? Let's talk about Cleveland for a moment. If you are Romeo Cornell and you've spent this whole preseason trying to get this team to gel and to come together, what do you take out of this 
season opening loss. I think you take a, a, a look at the defense first of all and say, hey, we have to do a better job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Our secondary is totally exposed because they're not getting pressure on the quarterback unless they blitz. And when you do that, you still expose your secondary to giving up big plays. And so I think it's going to start on the defensive side of the ball for Romeo Cornell. On offense, they look good at times. They just have to protect the football. Trent oh, Dilfer can't, can't turn the ball over. They can't fumble it, and he can't throw interceptions. But when they've had the ball, they moved it well. They do have to work on their red zone offense. But I think, really, the emphasis in terms of improvement starts with the Cleveland Brown defense. Another carry for Rudy Johnson. And that's a six-yard gain with a minute and a half to go now in this fourth quarter. Levi Jones, a little bit slow to get up after that run by Johnson. So Larry Moore is going to step onto the field, their talented and valuable backup. And what have we seen from Rudy Johnson? Just one run after another, four yards, five yards. See, they're getting gashed, this Cleveland Brown defense, right up the middle in between the tackles and that can't sit well with Romeo Cornell and so he understands that it's going to take some time to get the personnel to play the kind of defense that he wants he's using some of last year's parts bringing in some new guys as well moving some guys around they move Kennard Lang from the defensive end position to an outside linebacker position he lost weight some 50 pounds during the offseason trying to become quicker and leaner so he's a guy that's learning on the job as well was a stellar defensive end for this football team but when you ask guys to do things different there's going to be a learning curve and you could see this defense struggling because of it did you say 50 pounds yeah close to it man Kennard Lang starter in the 4-3 last year along that defensive line and then they made the decision that he was going to be a starter in the 3-4 as a linebacker with Sean Thompson shifting to the bench. But Matt Stewart went out of this game early with a right knee injury. And I stand corrected. It was 30 pounds. Okay. So it was 30 pounds. I'm with you. 50 we, shot. I mean, we, that, we do want to report accurate. That sounded obscene. That, that, was, <laughs> that was a large number. Well, no fried food and only water and fruit after 7 p.m. will do that to you. On the shovel, Palmer to Perry. And that was on fourth down. They didn't want to go for a field goal there. They've got the comfortable lead and only 46 seconds remain. So they'll turn it over on downs and Cleveland will wrap this one up on offense. So for the Cleveland Browns, they'll drop to 30 and 67 since coming back into the league in 1999. That is the worst record in football over that span. They went to the playoffs back in 2002, but that seems like an eternity ago this team is completely different from that team of three seasons ago first down over the middle Ruben drones and that's good enough for a first down on the pass play of 13 yards I tell you what I do like about the Cleveland I like Ruben drones as they're starting running back secures the football runs very hard I like the offensive line. I think over the last few years, this offensive line was woeful. They struggled to run the ball consistently, struggled to protect their quarterback. But with Jeff Fain, Joe Andrewsy, LJ Shelton, and how about Cozy Coleman? Hey, this is an offensive line I think it's much improved over what they had a year ago. Final seconds here in Cleveland. Dilfer throwing to Antonio Bryant to end it. The Cincinnati Bengals win on opening day 27 to 13 over the Cleveland Browns. Browns drop to one and six in season openers since rejoining the league. Strong offensive showing for Cincinnati today in the Battle of Ohio. For Solomon Wilcox, this is Ian Eagle. Cincinnati wins it. U.S. Open is coming up. But when